Lissa Productions. Okay, welcome back to Experimental Physics and an experiment investigating two slit interference. The idea of this experiment is to determine what the separation is between two very narrow, very closely spaced slits by creating a laser interference pattern and measuring the distribution of intensity of light on the screen produced by the interference from the two slits. So the equation that describes this process is n lambda equals d sine theta, where n is the order of interference or the number of the bright spot counting from zero uh, to positive integers on one side, negative integers on the other side. Lambda is the wavelength of the light that illuminates the slit, and in this case we're using a red helium neon laser. So the wavelength is 632.8 nanometers. Uh, theta is the angle at which the constructive interference occurs. So we measure the angle from the slit to the position of the slits, or of the bright spots on the screen. Now, if we're talking about an interference pattern where the constructive interference occurs at rather small angles, we can use the small angle approximation where the sine of theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta. And then all you need to do is carefully measure the distance L from the slits to the observation screen and the distance Y from the center of the interference pattern to the location of any of these bright spots. And the tangent of theta is just Y divided by L. So rearranging the equation for constructive interference, we have Y equals L lambda over D times N and you can determine the separation between the slits by making a plot of the position y, the location of the bright spot, as a function of n, the order of interference. And the slope of that plot is just L lambda over d. All right, so the basic setup involves placing a laser behind a pair of slits uh, that are in this piece of photographic film. But there are some real pitfalls that you'll need to be aware of. First of all, the laser beam is very narrow and the slits are very close together. So the first really obvious mistake that's made very often is not positioning the laser in such a way that it actually hits both of the slits at the same time. So we'll show you shortly what the interference pattern looks like from the two slit pattern and compare that to what happens if the laser happens to be hitting only one of the two slits and then the pattern looks very different. So be sure that the laser is illuminating both of the slits at the same time. Then what you'll need to measure is the distance from the slits to the observation screen. So the important thing to note about the interference pattern from two slits is that the bright spots are more or less uniformly distributed and uh, sort of evenly spaced, but a couple of possible problems that you might run into. One is that the intensity decreases as you go from the center of the pattern to the right or to the left. And occasionally the intensity will decrease to the point where some of the bright spots may not even be visible. So you want to be very careful in your bookkeeping when you count the center of the pattern is zero and then the bright spot just to the right of that, call that plus one. The next bright spot is two and so forth. But you may reach a point where you think there should be a bright spot and it's actually not there. That's the result of the single slit interference pattern modulating the intensity of the double slit bright spots. So if you think there should be a spot, but you don't see it, don't record that. Just skip to the next number. So you may have to go 0, 1, 2, 3, and then skip to 5, for example. Uh, so watch for a pattern that looks very uh, uniform in the distribution of the spots. So it may be easiest if you simply take a sheet of paper and mark with a pencil the location of each of the bright spots and after you've marked the entire pattern, take the paper down and measure it with a ruler. That may be a lot easier than trying to measure in situ with the ruler 
in the laser pattern. Uh, so just mark the position of the spots, take the paper down, and then use a ruler to measure the positions. Now I will show you next what this pattern looks like if the laser is missing one of the slits and only hitting one rather than both slits at the same time. So this is the pitfall that you may encounter when you're trying to do the double slit pattern. If you see a pattern that looks like this, stop and readjust the position of the laser behind the slits. This is not a double slit pattern, this is the single slit pattern. The characteristic of the single slit compared to the double slit pattern is a broad central maximum and then regularly spaced dark fringes. So what you want is uniformly spaced bright fringes, uh, not a big blob. If you see the big blob, then you'll have to readjust the laser to make sure that uh, you're hitting both of the slits at the same time. And this central blob will then break up into uniform bright spots for the double slit. So to summarize, what we're trying to determine is the separation D between a pair of slits. And that's done by measuring the location of the bright spots, the constructive interference spots, plotting the position of the spot as a function of the number of the spots, the order of interference. The slope of that plot is L lambda over D. And if you know the wavelength and you measure uh, the distance from the slit to the screen, you can calculate what the separation is.